ओल्ड वेज वोंट ओपन न्यू डोर्स वेलकम बैक टू आर चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल इफ यू नॉट एट डन टूडेज टॉपिक इज ऑन लाइपोमा एंड लाइपो ब्लास्टोमा सो लाइपोमा इज अ रेयर इंट्रा ओरल ट्यूमर एंड इट अकर्स मोर कॉमनली ऑन द स्किन मे बी ऑफ द नेक बैक थाइज आर्म्स इट इज अ बिनाइन स्लो ग्रोइंग न्यू प्लाजम composed of mature fat cells now there is a difference between the normal fat cells and the lipoma cells they although they appear histologically similar they are metabolically different so when a patient is on starvation he loses the fat from normal fat cells but there is no loss of fat from the lipoma cells now these lipoma cells have fatty acid precursors incorporated in them at a rapid rate and also they have a reduced lipoprotein lipase activity so these two points differ the lipoma cells from the normal fat cells now oral lipoma is a rare lesion and it was described first in 1848 by rocks and his associates and he described it as yellow epulis now the etiology a trauma may precede lipoma also some say that it is developmental origin because few lipomas show rearrangement of 12q 13q and 6p chromosome now the clinical features it occurs mostly in adults and there is no gender predilection the size of the lesion is 3 to 6 cm and it occurs mostly on the tongue floor of mouth buccal gingiva buccal mucosa gingiva and the mucobuccal fold so here you can see the clinical picture of lipoma on the buccal mucosa now morphologically lipoma is classified as diffuse type and encapsulated type diffuse type occurs in deeper tissues while the encapsulated type occurs in the superficial tissues now the description of superficial shear lipoma can be done as lobulated painless cyclopedunculated movable with very thin epithelium deep lipoma are soft they are cyst like and have over abundance of adipose tissue now what are the conditions where you can find multiple lipoma these include neurofibromatosis gardner syndrome encephalocraniocutaneous lipomatosis multiple familial lipomatosis and proteus syndrome now the histologic features lipoma is made up of mature lipo ad, mature adipocytes and collagen fibers it is well demarcated lesion with thin fibrous capsule and there it there is lobular appearance of the lesion so here you can see these are mature adipocytes and in between these mature adipocytes there are fibrous bands now the lesional fat cells may sometimes infiltrate and form thin extensions of fatty tissues now when the lipoma extends into the striated muscle it is called as intramuscular lipoma extensive involvement of the stromal tissues is called as lipomatosis increased fibrosis between the fat cells is called as fibrolipoma increased vascularity is angiolipoma if you find myxoid stroma it is called as myxolipoma spindle shaped cells is called as spindle cell lipoma if you see pleomorphic cells it is called as pleomorphic lipoma if spindle cells of smooth muscle muscle origin is seen then it is called as the myolipoma if lipoma occurs from the wa walls of arterioles it is called as angiomyolipoma if you find chondroid or osseous metaplasia in the lipoma tissue it is called as osteolipoma or chondrolipoma if the lipoma occurs in bone marrow it is called as myelolipoma if it occurs in ducts or glands it is called as adenolipoma if in nerve it is called as perineural lipoma 
benign neoplasm of the brown fat is called as hypernoma so all these are the mcq question you should know it by heart now what is lipoblastoma lipoblastoma was first described in 1958 by velios and it is nothing but continuation of the normal process of fat, fetal fat development carried into postnatal life clinically it appears as a solitary or multiple lesion occurring on the buttock chest or axilla diffuse form of lipoblastoma is called as lipoblastomatosis histologically there is a central core of mature adipocytes with variable sized fat vacuoles affected cells are smaller and they show multiple vacuoles light wispy cytoplasm and eccentric nuclei mitotic activity may be seen there is fibrous septae and defect in 8q1113 chromosome now the treatment of lipoma and lipoblastoma is conservative surgical excision and recurrence rate is quite low next lecture will be on variciform xanthoma which is again a very important topic that's all for now happy studying